okay so i guess we are here for the class i'll continue with the photosynthesis part I'll wait for another two three minutes so that people can join in. Okay, I guess I'll begin. <coughs> Lot of you are already here. So today we will carry on with the photosynthesis part. Uh, just give me one more moment. Okay, so I guess we are ready to take the class. <clears throat> so today our basic topic is photosynthesis. Now, or the autotrophic nutrition, or the types of nutrition that we are learning about. Now, basically, you see. Uh, learning about photosynthesis and understanding okay in the last video if you have watched it I have given you the structure or the cross-sectional structure of a leaf where there were palisade layers then there were spongy layers of mesophyll cells what are mesophyll cells the photosynthetic meristematic cells which contains the chloro Plast in them are known as the mesophyll cells. One mesophyll cells contains around 40 to 50 to 60 chloroplasts, and 
uh, there were the cuticle layer, the epidermis layer, and the bottom layer. There were some air vacuum. I mean, uh, you know, some free spaces were also there in the spongy layer for water vapor. If you remember the structure, and what happens is that uh, we had learned about the structure. Okay, so I would ask you to refer to the previous video and go through the structure. However, today also I will show you the structure in brief. And also you see that uh, what we can say is well, I have given you the structure of chloroplast. So the two structures that you have already understood that the photosynthesis goes on in the leaf. Now where the photosynthesis goes on? The photosynthesis goes on inside the chloroplast. Plast. The chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis. Why is the chloroplast site of photosynthesis? Because the chloroplast is the organelle or the cell organelle which contains the chlorophyll. And where is the chlorophyll in the chloroplast? In the thylakoid. And the stack of the thylakoids makes the grana. Suppose this is a cross sectional view of a chloroplast. This is a cross sectional view of a chloroplast. Now there are what? Thylakoid these coin like structures which are known as thylakoids and there are stacks of thylakoids like the stacks of coins which is known as what the grana and there are several granas in the chloroplast and the granas are linked with a structure like this known as the stroma lagali and the space around the grana is known as the stroma so that means this one coin like structure is the thylakoid. This entire structure or stack of thylakoid is known as grana. This entire space around the grana is known as the stroma. The connectors between the different granas are known as stroma lamellae. So this is the structure of a chloro, this is the structure of a what? Chlorophyll. Oh sorry, chloro, I'm so sorry, chloroplast. This is the structure of a chloroplast. Now you see that the chloroplast contains the chlorophyll. Where does the chlorophyll lie? The chlorophyll lie in the thylakoids that means the grana is the part where the chlorophylls lie this is the part where basically the chlorophylls lie okay so the chlorophyll basically lie in the thylakoid thylakoid is the place where the chlorophyll chlorophyll is what chlorophyll is the green pigment chlorophyll is the green pigment okay and there will be stroma lamellae <coughs> and now what happens uh, there also a little bit of chlorophyll will be there in the stroma lamellae but in the stroma there will be no chlorophyll at all okay so the grana the uh, chlorophyll is the green pigment the thylakoid contains the chlorophyll so the grana also contains the chlorophyll okay so this is the structure of a what we can say is the structure of a uh, chloroplast and the cross-sectional view of a leaf was what if you cut a leaf cross-sectionally the cross-sectional view of a leaf was like this there was one layer known as the epidermis layer oh and over the epidermis layer there was another layer known as the cuticle layer this was the cuticle layer this is the epidermis layer And there are layers of cell like this under the epidermal layer which are known as the mesophyll cells. Why are they called mesophyll cells? They are called mesophyll cells because they contain the or who are the mesophyll cells? The mesophyll cells are the cells who contain the chloroplasts. So these chloroplasts are contained in huge number in each of the cells they are contained in huge number 
in each of the cells. In each of the cells, they are contained in huge number. Okay, again, there is another layer. And in this layer, there is no air gap or air space. And hence, this, this is the epidermal layer. And hence, this particular layer, I'll write the epidermal layer above. This is the epidermal layer. Right. And this is known as the palisade layer of mesophyll cells. This is known as the palisade layer of the mesophyll cells. Now, this palisade layer of the mesophyll cells. In one mesophyll cell, there is lots and lots of chloroplast present. Lots and lots of chloroplast. Present. So that means these are the layers, and so what type of cells are they? I mean, according to the tissue level or what kind of tissue are they? Definitely, mesophyll cells are meristematic cells. What kind of cells? Meristematic, the living cells. Okay, because lots of kinds of metabolism will go on. As you know, that in the plants there are dead cells also, or dead tissues also, like the xylem fibers and all. Okay, the sclerin timer. Okay, so uh, apart from that, this is a meristematic cell, this is a meristematic part. Okay, and not only the mesophyll cells will form a palisade layer, which is a stacked layer, no air spaces, there will also be a spongy layer having various air spaces. Okay, there will also be a spongy layer. Okay, so this is the spongy layer. And there will be air spaces. This is air pocket or air space. These places are air pockets, air space, air pockets or air space. This one, this one, this space, this one, this one. Lots of air pockets. So that's why this type of and but these are, these are also definitely the mesophyll cells and they contain lots of chloroplast inside them. They also contain lots of chloroplast inside them. Okay. And Definitely that this containing chloroplast, definitely this uh, thing is there and hence this is known as the spongy layer. This is the spongy layer of mesophyll cells. Now what happens is that there will be the layer of epidermis again the bottom layer of epidermis which i will draw here but in this bottom layer of epidermis okay i'll draw it again i'm so sorry i want to show one thing in this bottom layer of epidermis okay in this bottom layer of epidermis this is the bottom layer of epidermis there are openings, these are openings or pores, these are openings or pores or pores which are the known as the stomata, the stomatal openings of the stomata pores. However, stomata also lies upwards but more number of stomata is present in the lower layer. Okay, upper layer also contains certain stomata but the lower layer contains more amount of stomata. So these are the openings of the pores and the, these are known as the stomata. So I hope that you have understood this part and this is the cross section of a leaf. If you cut a leaf, suppose for example, if this is a leaf, if this is a plant leaf, if you cut it open and if you magnify this portion, okay, then you will find this. So that is what I wanted to mention and wanted to say. So I hope that you have understood this particular thing and the chloroplasts that are here, which is shown by dots here, this is the magnified structure of the chloroplast. So each of the name of the layers and everything, I hope that is clear with you. So this was explained in the last video also, and this is just a recapitulation. So I will move forward with my explanation.
Now, moving forward, photosynthesis. See, when photosynthesis occurs in green plants or any uh, organism that is containing chlorophyll, what happens is that there are requirement of certain things. First, if you write down the equation of photosynthesis, CO2 plus H2O in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, these are mandatory, this should be present, okay, it produces C6H12O6 plus H2O plus CO2. This is an unbalanced equation. If you balance it, uh, there will be, I think, here it will be 6, here it will be 12, here it will be 6, 6, 6. In this way, it will be balanced. However, I don't want to balance it here. I just want you to show. Balancing is a different thing. I'll tell you in a chemistry uh, class that what is balancing and why it is required and how it is required. But here what happens is that this is CO2, this is H2O, this is C6H12O6, this is H2O, this is CO2. That means, what are the things that we basically require? The things that we basically require are number one, CO2 you require, definitely, and I have talked about this, that the carbon of the CO2 is the carbon of the glucose. And this glucose is used uh, for food purpose, for uh, nutrition, then for producing energy as used as nutrition. Then it can be used to make various biopolymers or macromolecules like the uh, proteins, the lipids and many things. Okay, because this is the ultimate carbon source for entering the and making the entire body of the organism as because the cells of the organism are made up of carbon. Okay, various molecules and the molecules are made up of carbon which was explained to you in the previous videos. I hope that that thing is clear to you and you can link that thing with this thing. <clears throat> that what? That CO2, as this is the reason why this process is autotrophic. This is the reason why this process is autotrophic. Why is this process autotrophic? This process is definitely autotrophic because why? This process is autotrophic. The reason behind it is that the uh, CO2 is used as the carbon source for making up the glucose and this glucose in turn will give energy or will be the precursor to make the molecules like proteins, lipids, DNA, RNA, whatever it is there to make up the entire cell and hence responsible for growth and hence gives us the raw material or gives us the material to make up our body or the plant's body in this case. Okay, so that's why they are autotrophs because they use CO2 and we do what? We eat up those plants and eat up their carbon, fixed carbon in their cells. Okay, their organic carbon. It is using inorganic carbon, CO2. We use the organic carbon source, their carbon, their cells or other organisms. Okay, suppose you are eating chicken, chicken eats plants. Okay, so it actually comes from the plant. When you see the food chain, you will see that in the food chain, there is a producer. The producers are always the photosynthetic organisms which can produce the food from CO2, right? And then C6H12O6 it makes and that is eaten by everyone. May it be herbivore or may it be omnivore. And as for the carnivores, they eat other organisms. And those organisms take their carbon from the plants. So it is that, that is why they are heterotrophs. They use the fixed organic carbon from the other organisms. So that's autotroph, heterotroph difference I have explained in the previous video also. Now, basically I am uh, coming to the photosynthesis part here. What is happening here is that the CO2 is required, first of all. Second, H2, that is water is required. Third, sunlight is required. And fourth, what is required? Chlorophyll is required. So these are the four things that are basically required. Now, what happens here is that, see, we take the CO2 from the atmosphere. Okay, I mean the plants. Here we mean plants. The plants take the CO2 from the atmosphere. H2 is absorbed from soil 
by roots. Sunlight falls on leaves and the chlorophyll is present already in the leaves. And where and how that I have definitely showed you in the in this video. <coughs> okay, I have definitely showed you. Just now I have showed you in the previous video. You can you know, rewind and see when you see the same video. Whatever. So moving ahead, CO2 is taken from the atmosphere, but CO2 enters in the plant. Now, can you see from where the CO2 enters in the plant? If you remember the structure, in the structure you have seen that there were stomata in the bottom layer. And as because there were stomata in the bottom layer, okay, if you remember the structure, from those stomatal pores, through stomata, CO2 enters through stoma. Now, the stomatal pores, CO2 definitely enters through stomata. Okay, through the stomata it enters. H2O is absorbed by roots, goes up to the leaves. Okay, where is the photosynthesis occurring? The photosynthesis is occurring into the chloroplast. Now, as because roots are absorbing it, roots are not having the chloroplast. The leaves are having the chloroplast, the, in the leaves the photosynthesis is occurring. So, I understand here that if you remember that structure, that, uh, you know, structure that I had drawn, this particular structure, I'll just quickly draw again because maybe it will be a little bit refer uh, give you a little bit of reference in your understanding level. Just a quick schematic drawing, okay? Now, the bottom layer. And if you remember that in the bottom layer there was stomata. So these openings or these pores are known as the stomata. These particular pores or openings are known as the stomata. These are cross section of the leaves, not of chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are there. So that means if this is the cross sectional view of the leaf, and what is happening here is that you see. Already chlorophyll is present. Okay, because chloro it is present in the chloroplast. If you remember the structure of the chloroplast, it was like this, isn't it? The grana was there, linked, isn't, isn't it? And the, this was the stoma. Okay, this part was known as the grana. And this part was known as the stroma. However, this, these were known as the stroma lamellae, so that is different. And here the pigments are there, the chlorophyll is present here, and the entire thing is present inside the mesophyll So, in the cells only, chlorophylls are present. The sunlight definitely falls on the leaves, okay, and the sunlight is absorbed by the chlorophyll pigment. The chlorophyll is a pigment, and sunlight absorbs the chlorophyll pigment. I will go into the detailed uh, no, discussion of the process, but the sunlight falls on the leaves directly. H2O is absorbed from soil by the roots. So how does H2O come in? Now you will have seen that here are water vapors. Now listen this to this part very carefully and understand to this part very carefully because this is really really very important part. What happens is that they, here you see that here are air pockets. Or air spaces. Now, what happens? You know that the from the roots, the what goes up the xylem vessels, isn't it? The xylem vessels goes up, and there is a pull. Okay, there is a pull. Okay, there is a transpirational pull, or there is a pressure known as tarver pressure, which pulls the water. Like you pull water from the well with a bucket, and you have to apply force on the rope of the bucket to pull the water. In the same way, there is a force in the xylem vessels, in the xylem tissue that you have learned in class nine, which is present in the plant. If I show a little bit of diagram here, if this is the tree. Okay, the xylem vessel, these are the roots. From the roots, the xylem vessel goes up like this. Okay, and there is a pull which takes the water up to the leaves. Okay, there is a pull which takes the water up to the leaves. 
Now what happens is that how it goes up? It goes up with a pressure known as standard pressure. How is the standard pressure created? That I will tell you. Now try to understand here, the xylem vessel is going up, the xylem tissue is going up. Now at, there are some, already it went up and let us understand in a cyclic way that there are, there is water in the cell. But then what happens, through the stomata, the water goes out, the excess water goes out as vapor through the stomata. Through the stomata, the excess water goes out as vapor and these air spaces, uh, which used to contain water, okay, these air spaces or air pockets, which used to contain water here, those water con converted, they, why did I say air pocket? Okay, because it contained actually air water vapor, okay, it actually contained water vapor, which is gas. So, what happens is, those all vapors goes out, okay, and this turns empty. So, there is a suction pressure created. And hence, from the cells, what happens? The water vapor, water evens comes out. Okay, but then the cells will lose water. That is not affordable. So what happens is the xylem gives the water, and a pull is created. A pressure is created, which pulls the water from the xylem. And xylem, in turn, with that pressure, takes the water up from the root. And in the root, the water enters by the process of osmo. Cis, that you very well know that it, by the process of osmosis the water enters in the root and it feels pressure because by the transpiration the vapors are going out and these spaces are becoming empty and hence water comes out from the cells into these spaces and the cells couldn't tolerate the lack of water so it pull, takes water from the xylem and xylem in turn feels a force which allows the, the osmotic pressure to develop and due to that osmotic pressure, the water moves up. I hope that you have understood this part, that in this way, H2O goes up. So, that is the discussion of how H2O goes up and is absorbed. Now, what happens is that the H2O part is done and the CO2. How does the CO2 enter? The CO2 enters, again the CO2 also enters through the stomata only. Now how? Through the stomata. Now as you know that if the, now my question is, if the, you already know that for photosynthesis, sunlight is required or light is required. Definitely. Okay. So, when it is dark or at night, okay, if there is, you know, no sunlight, at dark or night, if there is no sunlight, then what will happen due to the absence of sunlight, due to the absence of sunlight, what will happen is that, uh, there will be no photosynthesis because it is an important component. Okay, the sunlight actually activates the chlorophyll. Without sunlight, photosynthesis will not occur. And as because without sunlight, photosynthesis will not occur, so keeping the stomata open at night is not fruitful for the plant. Why would it keep it open at night? To lose extra water? Definitely not. Actually, they say that transpiration is the price that plants pay to do photosynthesis. Why they say so? They say or think that transpiration is the price plants pay to do photosynthesis. Now, why is this told that transpiration is the price uh, to do photosynthesis? Because at daytime, when the stomata is open, okay, then the water vapors are lost. And it is good that water vapors are lost and because of which water comes, but still it is a tedious process, okay. Then it is important, there, there are importance of transpiration, but then the, as because the stomata is open, that's why the water is lost. 
अदरवाइज तो जितना वाटर था मैं लेके रह जाता है ठीक है या फिर वाटर यूटिलाइज होने से धीरे धीरे वाटर होता है इतना फास्ट वाटर उठ रहा है क्योंकि क्यों इतना फास्ट वाटर इसलिए जायलम से आ रहा है जायलम से ऊपर उठ रहा है क्योंकि यहाँ से वाटर स्टोमाटा से लॉस हो रहा है ठीक है वेपर फेस में स्टोमाटा पोर ओपन है लेकिन स्टोमाटर पोर क्या वेपर लूज करने के लिए ओपन है नहीं स्टोमाटर पोर वेपर लूज करने के लिए ओपन नहीं है स्टोमाटर पोर ओपन है मेनली सीओ को अंदर घुसाने के लिए सीओ टू तो उन का खाना है सीओ से खाना बकेगा खाना बनेगा फोटोसिंथेसिस होगा तो सीओ को अंदर घुसना है इसीलिए स्टोमाटा खुलता है ठीक है तो सीओ को अंदर घुसाने के लिए स्टोमाटा खुलता है तो स्टोमाटा खुलता है तो वाटर वेपर भी लॉस हो जाता है उल्टा तो ट्रांसपीरेशन होता है तो दैट्स वाई दिस द ट्रांसपीरेशन इज द प्राइस दे पे टू डू फोटोसिंथेसिस ओके दैट इज द रीजन दे से इन दैट वे दैट ट्रांसपीरेशन इज द प्राइस दे डे दे दे डू टू दे पे ओके to do photosynthesis i hope that you have understood why they say like this because what happens is kyunki co2 ko andar ghusane ke liye co2 ko andar ghusane ke liye stomata khulta hai aur kyunki stomata khulta hai isliye vapor se loose hota hai okay so i hope that you understand this part that stomata actually opens to take in co2 ab raat ko to sunlight nahi rahega तो रात को सनलाइट नहीं होगा तो फोटोसिंथेसिस हो नहीं पाएगा तो फालतू में स्टोमाटा अस्सी हो तो घुसाने के लिए स्टोमाटा खुलने का जरूरत है तो रात को स्टोमाटा क्या हो जाता है बंद हो जाता है रात को स्टोमाटा बंद हो जाता है तो रात को जब स्टोमाटा बंद हो गया तो ट्रांसपीरेशन भी रिड्यूस हो गया और तो जरूरत भी नहीं है ठीक है सो आई होप दैट आप लोगों को ये पूरा बात अच्छे से समझ में आया होगा now i will discuss about the structure of the soma stomata and so we know that chlorophyll by it lies we know that sunlight falls we know how h2 goes to the leaves we know that what is the importance of co2 and which pore the stomatal pore opens to take in the co2 and what is the basic of it din mein khul jata hai and because of which transpiration occurs that we understand but lekin stomata khulne ke liye transpiration hota hai stomata khulta kis ke liye co2 ke liye it is as if That मैंने एक स्टूडेंट को घुसाने के लिए दरवाजा खोला तो दूसरा स्टूडेंट भी फ्री में घुस जाता है ओके सो ये हो गया ओके सो या फिर सोचो ऐसा बात है कि मैंने एक स्टूडेंट को मेरे रूम में बंद करके रखा है कि उसको कंट्रोल कर रहा हूँ लेकिन दूसरा स्टूडेंट को जब घुसाने के लिए दरवाजा खोल रहा हूँ तो वो स्टूडेंट जब घुस रहे हो तो वो दौड़ के बाहर निकल जा रहा है तो मुझे एक को घुसाने के लिए एक को छोड़ना पड़ रहा है तो वही बात है एक्चुअली सीओ टू वो स्टूडेंट है जिसको मैं अंदर घुसाना चाहता हूँ सीओ टू वो कंपोनेंट है जो इंपॉर्टेंट है जिसके लिए सोमाटा खुलता है और सोमाटा अंदर घुस जाता है सॉरी सीओ टू अंदर घुस जाता है लेकिन क्योंकि सोमाटा खुल गया इसीलिए वाटर वेपर बाहर निकल जाता है ओके सो दैट्स वाई दे से ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इज द प्राइस टू डेट टू डे पे टू डू फोटो सिंथेसिस आई होप दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड सो That is the importance of CO2 and how CO2 enters. So रात को बंद हो जाता है क्यों क्योंकि रात को सनलाइट नहीं है सनलाइट नहीं होगा इससे कोई चीज नहीं होगा तो फालतू में CO2 टू घुसाएंगे तो फायदा नहीं है सो दैट इज द रीजन स्टोमाटा रात को बंद हो जाता है अब सीखेंगे स्टोमाटा का स्ट्रक्चर एंड ओपनिंग एंड क्लोजिंग ऑफ स्टोमाटा टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ सीओ टू एंटर्स एट डे टाइम now what is happening is that stomata is a kind of structure where there are two kidney shaped guard cells like this i'm sorry this is closed stomata
Now what happens? This is closed stomata at night. When it will be day, what will happen is during the daytime, there are certain chlorophyll in the chloroplast in the dark cells. During day, when sun falls and some water is already present, it starts doing photosynthesis. It starts doing what? Photosynthesis. Now, when it starts doing photosynthesis, what happens is that photosynthesis occurs, which makes C6H12O6. Now, as because this is made from it ATP or energy is made, ATP is the form of energy that cells use. Okay, ATP or energy is made. Now, using ATP or energy, what happens is that there are certain pumps here. Okay, certain what here? Pumps. Means channels. Means rasta. Jis me se kya hota hai? Bohut sara ketla saayan andar goes nata hai. Din ke time hai. Ye night me nahi, ab day me hoga hai. Kyunki day me photosynthesis start hoga. Day me ye bane ga. Tabhi ATP bane ga. Energy bane ga. और उस ATP को use करके इस ATP को use करके using ATP made okay सर CO2 कहाँ से मिला क्योंकि stomata से ही तो CO2 थोड़ा सा cute CO2 stored था ठीक है थोड़ा सा CO2 stored था अभी high level में mesophyll cells में photosynthesis पूरे plants के लिए नहीं start हुआ है अभी stomata खुल रहा है कैसे खुलेगा देखो थोड़ा सा photosynthesis हुआ है थोड़ा सा CO2 वगैरह था ठीक है और ATP और energy बना अब यूजिंग द एटीपी क्या हो रहा है कि अंदर में के प्लस आयन घुस रहे हैं अंदर पे क्या घुस रहा है के प्लस आयन घुस रहे हैं अंदर में क्या घुस रहा है के प्लस आयन अंदर में के प्लस आयन घुस रहे हैं तो के प्लस आयन अंदर घुस गया यहां से के प्लस आयन अंदर घुस गया के प्लस आयन अंदर घुस गया के प्लस आयन अंदर घुस गया अब क्या हो गया यहां पे कंसंट्रेशन बढ़ गया तो इसकी वजह से क्या होगा अब पानी अंदर घुसेगा बिकॉज़ इट बिकेम इफ यू रिमेंबर द कांसेप्ट ऑफ हाइपरटोनिक एंड हाइपोटोनिक इट बिकेम हाइपरटोनिक and as because, as because it became hypertonic, then due to osmosis, what will happen? Due to the process of osmosis, by the process of osmosis, what will happen? Water will enter. What will enter? Water will enter inside. And when water will enter inside, the stomata will open. Now, if you have understood up to water entering inside, I will draw another diagram to make you understand. Up to this much, I hope that you have understood. Now, when water will enter inside, what will happen? Suppose this was the stomata. Okay. अब जब पानी अंदर घुसेगा तो stomata का एक बात है. Stomata का जो guard cell है, ठीक है? Guard cell के ये बाहर का cell जो है, बाहर का wall जो है, this is little bit fat or strong, and this wall is weak. ये स्ट्रॉन्ग है और ये वीक है होल्ड अप फॉर सेकेंड अच्छी कौन थी आई एम सो सॉरी मैंने उल्टा बोल दिया ये अंदर का जो है ये थोड़ा सा स्ट्रॉन्ग है स्ट्रॉन्ग वन स्ट्रॉन्ग वाल और ये जो है बाहर का वाल ये थोड़ा सा वीक वाल होता है अब थोड़ा सोचो सुबह सुबह फोटोसिंथेसिस हुआ एटीपी एनर्जी पैदा हुआ उससे क्या हुआ एटीपी को यूज करके एनर्जी यूज करके के प्लस आयन अंदर घुस गया के प्लस आयन जैसे ही अंदर घुस गया उसके बाद क्या हो गया कि यहां पे बहुत सारा पानी घुसना गुस, स्टार्ट करेगा ठीक है क्यों पानी घुसना स्टार्ट करेगा क्योंकि ये अभी हाइपरटोनिक बन चुका है क्या बन चुका है हाइपरटोनिक ये मतलब यहाँ पे कंसंट्रेशन बढ़ गया है बहुत सारा पानी घुसेगा जब यहाँ पे पानी घुसेगा तब क्या होगा क्योंकि ये बाहर का पार्ट बाहर का पार्ट थोड़ा सा वीक है पानी की वजह से यहाँ पे बहुत ज्यादा प्रेशर फील होगा पानी की वजह से यहाँ पे बहुत ज्यादा प्रेशर फील होगा 
और पानी की वजह से प्रेशर फील होगा इस वजह से क्या होगा उतना ज्यादा प्रेशर यहाँ पे अप्लाई नहीं हो पाएगा क्योंकि ये पार्ट तो ठीक है ना तो ये क्या करेगा ऐसे खींच के ऐसे स्टोमाटा को ओपन कर देगा ऐसे खींच के स्टोमाटा को ओपन कर देगा क्योंकि यहां पे तो प्रेशर अप्लाई हुआ है ना बहुत अच्छे से क्योंकि बाहर का पोर्शन तो वीक था लेकिन तुम बोलोगे पानी ने ऐसे प्रेशर क्यों नहीं मारा ऐसे प्रेशर क्यों नहीं मारा नहीं मार पाएगा तो क्योंकि ये तो प्रेशर मारने से भी बहुत थिक वाल है ठीक है तो वो जहां पे था, था ये वाल जहां पे था था लेकिन यहां पे प्रेशर के अप्लाई की वजह से ऐसे टांग के इसको ऐसे खोल दिया और यहां पर पोर ओपेन हो गया स्टोमाटा को अब क्या होगा आराम से सीओ टू अंदर घुसेगा आई होप दैट यू हैव अंडरस्टूड निकल जाएगा तो ये सेल सिकुड़ जाएगा क्योंकि ये पैक पोर्शन है ये जहां पे था वहीं पे रहेगा और ये ऐसे सिकुड़ के ऐसे टाइम के खुला था ना और तो ऐसे सिकुड़ के वहीं पे वापस ऐसा स्ट्रक्चर बन जाएगा क्योंकि यहां पे तो प्रेशर था यहां पे प्रेशर था यहां पे प्रेशर था यहां पे प्रेशर था इसीलिए टांग यहाँ पे प्रेशर फील करके ऐसे टांग की ये खुला था ओके देख इट फील द प्रेशर एंड इट स्ट्रेच ओपन बट हाउ एवर नाउ द प्रेशर विल नॉट बी देयर एंड इट विल गो बैक टू इट्स ओरिजिनल फॉर्म एंड दिस पोर्शन विल आल्सो कम बैक टू इट्स ओरिजिनल फॉर्म एंड द स्टोमाटल पोर विल क्लोज एट नाइट दैट आई होप दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड द ओपनिंग एंड क्लोजिंग ऑफ स्टोमाटा सो डे टाइम द स्टोमाटा ओपेंस नाइट टाइम द स्टोमाटा क्लोजेस एंड हाउ द स्टोमाटा ओपेंस एंड क्लोजेस ड्यूरिंग द डे टाइम एंड ड्यूरिंग द नाइट टाइम आई होप दैट आई हैव बीन able to make you clear okay so i hope that you are understood this particular phenomena So I will drop the board. So if I little bit revise, what happens? If this is the closed tomato. Day time me photosynthesis start होगा क्योंकि कुछ कुछ chloroplast guard cell में भी होता है. इन लोगों को guard cell बोलते हैं. और यहाँ पे क्या रहेगा? C six H two O six बन जाएगा. तो उससे थोड़ा ATP बनेगा. उस ATP और energy को use करके यहाँ पे channels रहता है या pumps रहता है. ठीक है? जिसमें से K plus ion क्या होगा? अंदर घुसेगा. अब जब के प्लस आयन अंदर घुसेगा तो ये हाइपरटोनिक बन जाएगा जब ये हाइपरटोनिक बन जाएगा तो पानी भी अंदर घुसेगा जब पानी अंदर घुसेगा तो क्योंकि ये वाला पोर्शन थोड़ा सा वीक है और ये वाला पोर्शन थोड़ा सा थिक है थिक पोर्शन है स्ट्रॉन्ग पोर्शन है ये वाल इनर वाल एंड आउटर वाल इज लिटिल बिट थिक थिन सो वट एपन देर विल बी प्रेशर फेल्ट ड्यू टू वाटर इंटरविंग वाटर का प्रेशर एंड द गार्ड सेल विल पुल इट आउट Okay, actually it will become a little bit fat, and it will become it will pull this out, and as a result it will stretch open. Okay, it will stretch open like this. And at night when the water will come out, and the cell will become flaccid or sicur jayega. ठीक है? जब खुलता है तो याद रखना ये flaccid होता है, tarjid होता है. जब खुलता है क्योंकि अंदर में पानी है, तो tarjid है. और जब पानी निकल जाता है, जब बंद होता है तो अंदर में पानी नहीं है, तो flaccid है. ये class nine में concept सिखाया था मैंने. ठीक है फ्लासिड है तो टर्जिट बन के ये खुल जाता है स्ट्रेच हो जाता है आई होप दैट यू हैव अंडरस्टूड दिस पोर्शन वेल थैंक यू नाउ एज यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द सोर्स ऑफ एवरीथिंग द सीओ टू दिस दैट ओके वी हैव डेफिनेटली अंडरस्टूड The source of everything. Uh, we are now ready to understand the concept of photosynthesis, which is very short. What happens is that photosynthesis has two parts. One is the light reaction. One is the dark reaction. Now I will discuss these two parts in greater details. Okay, but first you need to grab the concept that I have given you today. So go through it, the video, make notes, and try to grab the concept. And you will have another class and another video with it. 
which will be given to you with a detailed explanation of the process of photosynthesis. So I hope we have moved ahead. I'm so sorry. We have moved a lot ahead and thank you.